People say I got a drinking problem. That ain't no reason to stop. Midland Drinking Problem, that is their debut off their self-titled EP, and uh, they're in Toronto tonight, and joining me right now, Cam, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> wow, I love that. That intro is epic. <laughs> talking about the music, man. That was just insane. <laughs> Best intro for the song ever, right? Great, dude. I love it. <laughs> so what's going on with you guys? Not much, man. We're just... Uh... Hold up here in some tiny little hotel room in Toronto. Uh, oh, they put you in a, in a small hotel? Like, you think Universal would be better than that? Hey, man, look, we, <laughs> we're no frills, man. We're no frills artists here. I'm not kidding you. Mark and I are sharing a room this time around. We switch who gets to share the room because we only get two, and Mark and I are in two single beds. Not doubles, not queens, certainly not a king. They are two <laughs> single beds. Well, I mean, you you guys do do the nod to the old Wild West, so, I mean, it just seems fitting, right? Hey, man, nothing <laughs> a few beers can't fix. That bed feels like a king, California king, dude. You have a couple, you've got a couple <laughs> tequila drinks in you. <laughs> there you go. Well, like, you guys burst onto the scene. I mean, drinking problem kind of came out of nowhere, and, yeah. it, and people are just loving it. Came out of nowhere. It only took 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Or more. I mean, I've been playing music since I'm in sixth grade. So I've uh, been in bands my whole life, been in, in different bands with Jess and Mark for the last decade. Uh, Midland is the first time the three of us started playing music together about three years ago. Formed in uh, in Texas, a little town called Dripping Springs. My favorite state. It is my favorite state too, brother. <laughs> I love Texas. I got it deep in my heart. Uh, I would say Texas. Oh, as far as teams? Yeah. Oh, dude. Got to go Cowboys, man. I grew up number 20. Was it? 20, yeah, no, no. I was thinking because my brother had. <laughs> sorry, Mark has dropped in on this conversation. Irving was 88, though, right? <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm trying to remember because I stole my brother's jersey. Nice. Uh, number 22, uh, Emmett Smith. We had Troy Aikman, Irving, Neon Dion. It's about the Cowboys in the 90s. My dad grew up outside of Dallas, so it was mandatory that we liked the Dallas Cowboys. Same. There is no question it goes to the Cowboys. You, you just jumped to the top of my favorite list. Is that right? I'm a diehard Cowboys fan, man. I made the drive from here all the way down just for the Thanksgiving game two years ago against the Panthers. Oh, dude, those Thanksgiving <laughs> – come on. I mean, what a game. What a place to see – I mean, you got to see them in Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. The house that Jerry stadium. built, I, I saw, man, 24-hour drive. We didn't stop. That's, got, that's how you do it. I'm sure you guys uh, <laughs> stayed awake by any means necessary. I saw the Rolling Stones there on their last tour. It's incredible, man. That Well, and one of these days you're going to be in there. One of these days – <laughs> oh boy! From your lips to God's ears, man. I sure hope so. You're you're gonna pack that place. I'm telling you right now, dude. Man. It, okay. So here's the deal. If we ever pack that place, if we ever even get to go there, yeah. But let's just say if we play there, whether it's at capacity or not, you're gonna introduce us on stage. Deal. Handshake official. You're gonna say <laughs> you wanted the best. <laughs> well, they couldn't make it. Here's Midland. <laughs> You see, you're my kind of people, man. That's right, man. <laughs> All right, enough about the Cowboys, though. We've got that taken care of. Let, let, let's talk about the music. Um, I heard somebody call you the, the Millennial Mavericks. Whoa, that's wild. I never heard that. I, I heard somebody, they were interviewing. I, I, maybe you weren't there. I don't know who was, but I heard they called you the Millennial Mavericks, and I was like, it's, it's kind of true, but I don't know. Like, I'm just not a big fan of the word millennial. Um, well, we're certainly not millennials, <laughs> but I guess we live in the millennial era, so I guess right. it's applicable in some way. Um, that's cool. Any comparison to Mavericks is welcome to us. They're you know part of the reason why we signed at Big Machines because they also have the Mavericks. Um, love them. Huge, huge influence for us. Um, I don't know what else to say about them other than can you get me tickets to their next show? 
Uh, I might be able to help you out. I'll see what I can do. Okay, I'll, I'll, ma- I'll make some calls for you, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, expl- you know, you've got drinking problem out. The EP's out now. But what can people expect going forward uh, with the debut album that's out later this year? Man. Just bring your diaper, okay? Because <laughs> things are going to get all kinds of awesome. Look, we're really excited. Uh, it'd be weird if it was like a solo act and I was sitting here telling you how great my upcoming album is going to be. Right. But because I'm in a band, I feel like I am uh, allowed to brag because I'm only one third of it. And I'm, I'm so proud of my band members, and my, my, my band mates, Jess and, and Mark. Um, and our friends that we got to co-write a lot of these songs with, um, dude, we're we're just super proud. So I, I'm just imploring everybody to trust our uh, trust our our taste. Well, I mean, it's if it's anything good. like the EP, it's it's going to be phenomenal. I I man, I've got high hopes. I, let's just say I'm not. Uh, I know it's the tendency um, is to to worry about like rising to the expectations, but dude, I, I plan on blowing the doors off. Well, I look forward to it. And I mean, you're you're working with a, a pretty big name on this. I mean, Shane McAnally is helping you out with this. He's like Shane's like the he's sort of he he's he's the unofficial fourth member of Midland. If if him and Josh and then Dan Huff, who's co-produced all this stuff too, has become sort of like a football coach like type of father figure in a way, um, as well. The people that work with us um, closely are people that speak the same language as we do and understand our vision, you know what I mean? And, and Shane was one of the first people to to run the flag, you know what I mean? Right. So we, we, are, we, we owe him a, a great debt. We love Shane. We love Josh. We love Dan. You love them all. We love them all, man. There's not a lot of people we don't like, to be honest with you, dude. <laughs> We we've we've had some good times with uh with with some of the people that, you know, we just a couple months ago been listening to the radio and go, Man, yeah, that's a good song. Oh my god. You know what I mean? Here's the Brothers Osborne. We're at the ACMs a couple weeks back and Right. Shooting crafts with those dudes and you know, getting into some trouble. It's just funny, man. <laughs> it's just so weird because it's so new to me. So I'm just like, what? So you're like, just you're just enjoying it all. You're just taking it all in. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, totally. You have to. Well, you, what? It's a wild ride, right? It's very wild. So you just got to enjoy enjoy the moment and just go with it. Constantly have to doing a evaluation check, you know, uh, and making sure that. You're really enjoying every bit of it. There's no, there's no complaining. There's no, no crying in baseball. There's, <laughs> love it. Love, great, great quote. Great quote. Um, so I want to talk just here quickly. Uh, so you've had a chance to open for Dwight Yoakam, but Willie Nelson. How cool is that? Like he's thinking, Mr. Texas almost. Yeah, he is. After taking several readings, um, I was just thinking that quote. I was trying to drop it in when, when taking stock, you know. <laughs> Um, Willie Nelson is the godfather of country music and, uh, Dripping Springs happens to be where we live, uh, happens to be Willie, sort of like Willie, Willie Nelson land, if you will. He had a house out there that ended up burning down. He did all of his 4th of July picnics that are now, uh, you know, uh, part of the lore of the outlaw movement, um, of the seventies. Right. He's, he's, uh, omnipresent. Yeah, we got to open for him uh, at the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix two nights in a row, dude. That is unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> that and Dwight Yoakam, who are, you know, just the, the a bit, some of the biggest influences for us. You know? I can I can tell because you're kind of speechless. Well, what can you say? <laughs> what, what can what can there be said that hasn't already been said about those guys? That you know? that's true. That's true. And I I finally I finally got to see Willie last year, and I was just in awe. Like I had not. Like how was it? How good is his guitar playing? He's insane. Still. He's insane, man. He like, shreds, he's, dude. He's eighty whatever years old and just going crazy. Like ugh. It, it's 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 uh it's it's inspiring. That's one thing I can say and I'll always say is um, 
playing with guys like that because you don't know how long these guys are going to be around. No, you know I mean? no. And and uh, boy, we played a show at Mercer Hall, which is our local honky tonk in Dripping Springs. Right. The night Merle played his last show uh, in Texas down the street, he's playing the Nutty Brown. Yeah. And we, I remember going up on stage, and we were like, uh, uh, the the owner, we were sound checking. The owner goes, "All right, boys, well, don't expect anybody for the first hour, because <laughs> uh, Merle's playing down the street." And we were like, "Wait, are you kidding me? He's playing. We didn't get tickets. We were, and we had to huddle up. We're like, how do we get out of the show? Can you postpone the start time?" <laughs> Dude, we ended up playing a three hour set that night and just there was no way to no way to make it over there. But we, we played some Merle covers for those for the idiots that came to see us and not Merle. <laughs> hey, but you need, those idiots are probably your biggest fans. Oh no, there are no idiot Midlanderos. <laughs> That's what we call the the Midland fans, man. The Midlanderos. The Midland Arrows. The Midland Darrows. Oh, Darrows. That's right, man. The Midland Darrows. Those these are are the people that uh, give us the reinforcement to go out there every night and, and you know, and keep doing this crazy thing they call country music. Well, then I want to join. You're in, man. You're an honorary Midlandero. Fantastic. Well, Cam, I'm not going to take too much time here. I just want to thank you for taking time out today to talk to me. Sure, man. And then I am definitely going to see you tonight. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm going to fly down there, and uh, I, I honestly, I can't wait. All right, bro. We'll have a beer. Absolutely. Right. I, I, um, I will never say no to a nice cold beer. <laughs> <laughs> me either, man. So we're going to cheers when I see you. Thank you for having me on. And, you know, uh, look forward to the, to the, uh, to the full-length album that's coming out in s- September. Can't tell you exactly when. It's a surprise. Okay. And uh, also... <laughs> Let me drop a little something, something here. We are we're playing. We're opening for Tim and Faith. Yes. Um, four dates in Canada. It's a great honor for us to be playing for our heroes. Um, where are we playing? We are playing in Vancouver. We're playing in Calgary. We're yeah, you got the Edmonton, West Coast. Edmonton and Saskatoon, but <laughs> we are playing in Toronto in August. What? Oh yeah, dude. We're playing the. Um, why do I want to say boots and hearts and not hearts and boots? You, you're no, you're not. You're not playing boots and hearts. Yes, we are, dude. No, we're playing boots and hearts. I don't even think they've announced that yet. They haven't announced what day we're gonna do it yet. That's why I can't tell you which day. But we're playing it, babe. Oh man, you just, ugh, you just changed the whole day for me now. I, we're excited, man. I love Canada. My favorite band is the band, and uh, as we all know, Rick Danko, Robbie. Garth and Richard are all Canadian. Yeah, that, I mean, you can never go wrong with the band, right? No, you can't. So the, I, my favorite, my favorite those bass are, player of all time is Rick Danko. So I'm here to honor him. You're here. So you, are you, are you going to wear the band T-shirt tonight? Oh, dude. <laughs> my, the ba- I wear the band outfit. I mean, my whole wardrobe <laughs> is based off of the last waltz. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, sir. <laughs> Now, quick question: This is, uh, are you gonna have merch there tonight? Dude, we didn't come with merch because ah. uh, we're not making money in Canada, or else we'd have to have a a, a work visa, man. Right, gotcha. So here's what's up: for gotcha. anybody who wants merch, first off, Neil, you're not paying for a t-shirt. I'm gonna give you one. Oh, you're, you're an honorary Midland Darrow. You're the best. Um, and you've allowed me to take up way too much time on your show. Um, but if anybody does want a shirt or a hat or you know any kind of knickknack or music on a physical CD or vinyl, just go to our website. It's middleandofficial.com. Yeah, you got some sick T-shirts, man. Thanks, dude. You got some sick T-shirts. I and appreciate I, that. I was looking for the vinyl today or the other day at record. We've got Store. a single out. Uh, the single's on vinyl. Yeah, the seven inch. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's uh, A side drinking problem, B side burnout. That's yeah, that's my that's what I was looking, but no, you guys only sell it. No stores have it. No, it's it is uh, only can only be found at middleandofficial dot com right now. Well, man, I will see you tonight. We will have a couple beers, and I look forward to jamming out. Cool, man. I appreciate it.